by the name of the Lord this morning, truly. Oh, magnify the name of the Lord this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and give God thanks. We welcome you to Bethel Tabernacle, the place where we glorify God, the place where we lift up the name of Jesus, the place where we make sure that you are edified, that you are enriched, and that you are empowered to do the work of God in this present season. Whatever you are going through, we want to just magnify the name of the Lord and say, God, thank you for another day. Thank you for blessing us one more day in the land of the living. The Lord has brought us down, has brought us through this month of June, and we're right on the precipice of another month. You have so much to give God thanks for, and I welcome you. I want you to partner with me. I'm the Reverend Dr. Dave Allen, and as we go into the presence of the Lord, I'm excited about worship this morning. I'm excited about what God is about to do this morning. And if you're excited, I want you, I want you, I want you, you and you to make sure you share. Make sure you share. Make sure you share this message. Make sure you share. Make sure you share. Notify somebody. Call somebody. But right there in the comment section, I want you to engage with us. I want you to go in the comment section right now and just hashtag the phrase. You know what it is. It's time to worship. It's time to glorify the name of Jesus. Let everything that had breath lift up the name of Jesus. Let everything that had breath magnify the name of God. Where my enemy people's at. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Is there anybody out there? Who's just excited that the Lord has brought you through so far? And when you look back over your shoulders, when you came through the month, hey, no, 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 I'm not talking back to me this morning. You came through the month of January. You came through the month of February. You came through the month of March. You came through the month of April. You made it through the month of May. Now, now, you're about to face the month of July. Is there anybody out there? I mean, about 500 of y'all who will 
Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity to once more come into your holy house of worship. This has been an extraordinary event that we've been through. This is the fourth Sunday in June. This has been a six month of the year that we never imagined, but with, in spite of and throughout all the, the death and sickness, we know that you are in control. And we just thank God and we praise your name to allow us to uh, bring this word through this technology to the people of God, wherever it is that they may be. Thank God for this church family that still stays strong, that is tight, that is uh, still finds it not robbery to continue the, the, the worship in this small church on the hill in Weeksville, Brooklyn. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you, I, I, I know that you encourage us, I know that you protect us, but for the sake of the people who are listening, I say it out loud, that please continue to keep your arm around us and everybody encourage them, give them faith that when God is in control, no man, no virus, no anything can harm them. This I ask in Jesus' name, and I ask that you, we will continue in this manner until such time that you see fit to bring us all once again joyously, joyously back into the house of the Lord. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
you've blessed us each and every single week. And I'm so grateful and thankful to God for you. Amen. If you are blessed by that, would you go in the comment section and just give God all the praise right now? Somebody just said, falling in love with Jesus is the best thing. It's the best thing, the very best thing that could ever happen to you. Amen. I need you to go into that comment section right now, right now. But I also need you, I also need you to make sure that you're sharing this video. Make sure that at this day, this very day, that you encourage somebody, you empower somebody, and make somebody feel they hear the word and get enriched today. Would you do that for us this morning? Do it for yourself also. Let someone know in your family that we are on and that they need to be enriched. They need to get a word this morning. But right now, right now, I want to introduce to a beloved friend of mine. She's here with her son, Zeph Meyer. This is Princess Taisha Beckford, uh, the beloved wife of Bishop Beckford. Amen. Amen. And so we're here this morning and she's going to play a selection. She's going to come again after this first one. But I am so blessed. So I want you to know, I want you to go in to the comment section right now and I want you to hashtag it's time to worship. It's time to worship. And so please, be empowered, hear the word, hear the message, but love these songs as we worship. Get into a moment of worship as we go into this selection right now. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are here, moving in the midst. I worship you. I worship you.
few months, these 90 days going over to 100 days of uh, being with us since we were closed, the buildings were closed, but we were still having church. Amen. And even in the midst of when they told us not to go outside, I was, we were still showing up to make sure, to make sure that you were blessed yes. every single Sunday. We have not missed a beat. Yes. We have not missed a beat. And ministry cost. We want thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. And I'm so grateful for the people who have come out every single Sunday to support me. It has not been easy. They have families also, and I'm grateful for them. 
Um, but we need your support as we move into the next uh, season. Right now is the summer season, and you do know, uh, even though we're quarantined, that um, people do um, either stop coming to church and these things happen, but we want you to consistently be a supporter of this ministry and a partner in ministry. Please, thank you. Thank you. Would you so into this ministry? You can go right there on Bethel, www.bethelTabernacleAME.org. You can see the link right at the bottom of this page. Or you can um, give by uh, text the word give to 716. 226-5253. That word that number is ingrained in my head by now is 716-226-5253. Also, you can go online and you will see how to give by GiveLify. You can give by Cash App and you can give by PayPal. Thank you for those who have been consistent and diligence in your giving. I love you and I appreciate you. I don't love you just because you give. I love you because you believe God. I'm going to say that again. I love you not because you give. I love you because you believe God. Amen? Amen. And so when you sow into something good, good will come back to you. And I promise you that. I promise you that. And so just before we go into the preach world, um, our beloved guest is going to give us two selections right now. I'm asking you to make sure you share this video. Make sure you share this video. And we go into the work. God bless you now. Yeah. 
preach and that's the preach word right here Amen. oh my goodness thank you so much thank you so much and she will definitely come again if you enjoy that this morning would you let us know if that bless you this morning i mean everybody up in here was dancing she could have gone on until 12 and we would have been fine with it amen but now there's a quick word, just a reminder that at 1 p.m. we'll be celebrating our graduates this morning. And um, we ask you this afternoon at 1 p.m. on Zoom, and you should have received the, the Zoom coordinates by now. And so we ask you, please, please join us so that we can celebrate those who are moving up, those who are graduated, and those who are moving on. So please, please, it's a word from the Lord real quick. I am so, um, so blessed this morning. Um, by your presence, um, Taisha and, and Zephaniah. And as, as far as I come, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure you, I wish you'd be here every single Sunday. Amen. <laughs> I'll just be dancing all morning. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That was, that was of God. Amen. And I thank God for your friendship and, and for the, bless, the blessedness that you are here with us this morning. Please check her out. Her, um, I don't, you have a web page, right? You have CDs and everything. And then, do you want to see where that is? That's like, yeah. oh, that's, uh, we'll give it the next time. Yeah. All right. There's a quick word for, from the Lord this morning. It's Psalms 13, Psalms 1 3. Psalms 1 3 is a quick word. It's an encouraging word for somebody out there who's going through summer. Summer came upon us and we didn't even realize that summer was here. Amen. Spring came and spring left without saying goodbye. Amen. Because most of us was in quarantine. But there's a word from the Lord for somebody. It's a, it's a hard season for many people out there. Amen. And I want to encourage them this morning. The word of God. It says here, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? Actually, let me read that again in, in the proper way it should be read. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me Answer me, O oh Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. My enemies will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. Now watch this, watch this next verse, this verse, watch this. But I trust in your unfailing love. Somebody out there will catch that again. My heart rejoices in your salvation, I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. Somebody didn't get that. I'm going to read that again. Yes. But I trust yes. in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to 
to the Lord. Amen. For he has been good. Somebody say he has been good. For he has been good to me. Merciful God. Now speak through me to your people. Speak to those who are overwhelmed. Speak to the person who is depressed. Speak to the person who is struggling. Speak to the person who feels as if they have all the answers. Speak to the person who feels as if they can't hear, can't hear a word from you. Speak to somebody. Speak to a graduate. Speak to a senior. Speak to a man. Speak to, speak to a son. Speak to an uncle. Speak to an aunt. Speak to a niece. Speak to a mother. Let the word be so clear. Let it land on their hearts and minds. Amen. And amen. amen. This week, it wasn't a good week for many people right here in New York. Especially when Mayor de Blasio came on and announced but because of the pandemic, because of the COVID-19 environment and its effects on the economy, that 22,000, I didn't say 22 people, not 2,200, 22,000 people will be laid off. I'm going to say that again right here in New York. Twenty. Thousand families will be affected. Uh, my wife and I had the privilege of speaking to one of our children's teachers. I felt led to pray because I felt the burden of it. I can imagine that multiply that by 22,000 people who will get the news that they will be laid off who will get the news that there will be excess if you're in the Department of Education. As a, as a city worker, you'll be laid off. Now, every single week, you have to find ways and means besides on receiving unemployment to make it. It's a shift in our life. It's a shift in the environment. Right? Now, well, think about it. I want to bring a real gospel to your relevant gospel. Think about this. But in this environment where, where, where employers are looking at being very, very selective at whom they hire. And now we're in the midst of the tension of racial disparity, right now in the midst of it, when we're wondering because of the color of my skin, would I be hired? Oh, think about it. And now we come through the summer looking towards fall. Like I said when I first started, we did not even get to enjoy spring. We didn't get a chance to smell the flowers. We didn't get a chance to say, I'm looking forward to when the summer comes and so we can prepare for travel. And when we look around this country, it's sad when we think about what's happening in Florida. It's sad when we look around at what's happening in California and even what's happening in Texas. Just imagine if that was to happen right here in New York again. After being quarantined for almost 90 days and they have to tell us again, everything needs to be shut down. I can imagine what this psalmist was going through. This, this, this psalm, which is known as a, a lament psalm, a psalm where he's making an appeal to God because he's tried everything and God seems to be nowhere. What do you, here's the tension of the text, what do you do? When you've tried everything, calling upon God, you've fasted, you've prayed all night, you've tarried all night, you've read the scripture, you've asked someone to pray for you, and God does not seem to answer. What do you do when you need answers to pay that rent, when you need answers for your Medicare, when you need answers to pay that medical bill, when you need answers because the doctor told you that from the scan, from the prognosis, the cancer is back. What do you do when you go for the mammogram and you're hoping that it will be fine? And next thing the doctor says, I saw a lump. What do you do 
when you've been in a place of being taken care of your family, but your husband says, I've had enough, the wife says, I'm out of here. What do you do when you found out your kids have been cutting their skin? Lord. What do you do when you think you've done everything for your children, but next thing they told you they're depressed? And they're cutting their skin and they're doing things to harm themselves. Let me just inform you, just in case you think that there are no depressed people in the church. As a matter of fact, there are more depressed people in the church than there are outside. Yes. There are more depressed people full of anxiety and hurting themselves in the church, but they're just doing it in secret. And because we pull up the fallacy, oh, just, just keep praying, just keep doing this, and, and we don't really help them through it. But the psalmist is saying, how, God, how long will you keep hiding yourself? It's not, if he used the word, God, how long will you forget me? It's not to say that God has a selective amnesia. It's not to say that God has dementia. But there are times, if you can be real, if I can talk to some real people out there, there are times when you're praying, when you've gone to that job interview, and they said this, watch this, somebody. They said, yes, you look like a Bible candidate. And you go back home all excited. You text your friend saying, I might get this job. I might just open up the business. But there is no call back. Have you ever been there? When you're hoping that this job will make a difference in your family. When you're hoping that you will get that permit, but it doesn't happen. It's not every single time that we testify that God just opened that door. It's not every single time that God opens that door. It's not every single time that God shows up. I'm just talking to some real people out there. There's sometimes that you just have to stand upon what you know your grandmother, what you know your father put inside of you and says, I will trust God regardless. And that's why I want to give you the words this morning, my sermon topic this morning, I want to put real quickly before you is tell me something good. Uh, there's too much bad news everywhere in the media. There's too much bad news across the media. There's so much bad news that every single time we have a leader of the one of the most powerful country of this world, but every single time he opens his mouth, I have to hold my breath for what he's about to say. I'm not talking to any real people out there. Every single time he opens his mouth, I've got to say what's next because I don't know if he's trying to empower policemen to do wrong or if he's trying to get rid of a certain type of people or if he's trying to do a genocide or if he's trying to get rid of the people who's trying to get the same equal share. Oh. How long, Lord, will you forget me? Oh. The question is forever. And I notice one, I want you to notice something real quickly. The how long is asked four times, four times, four times in this text. Four times. The repetition of it is deep. The repetition of it sinks deep within your mind and your heart. But you have to wonder, it must be serious. And the part that spoke to me is when he says, he says, um, he says, all night long. Watch this, watch this. He says, I'm going to read for you. He says, how long will you hide your face from? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? Have you ever been in a place where it seems as if the night is not going to pass? You're on your bed looking up at the roof and you're saying, I know some of y'all, as, as soon as you hit your pillow, you're out. But there's some of us who have to deal with life. There's some of us who have to deal with the realness of, what, of our workplace, the realness of our family, the realness of an employer, the realness of everyday struggles. And well, I was reading as the Spirit of God spoke to me and I heard himself said to me, because I've been there with this psalmist when he says, how long must I wrestle with my thoughts all night long? And I would get times, if I can be real, when I lay down at night and I was wrestling with my thoughts. I'm wrestling why this person is acting this way. I'm wrestling with church business. I'm wrestling with family. I'm wrestling with fake friends. I'm wrestling with friends who are supposed to be friends, but they're really enemies. I'm wrestling with other things that are happening in this economy. And the Lord spoke to me while I was doing this. The Lord says, son, I don't want you to be caught up with things that don't benefit you. I want you to worry only about my presence. If I am not here, that's when 
you should be worried about. But don't give power to things that don't benefit you. Don't give power to people who don't empower you. Don't give power to things that's not going to take you into a better place. Am I speaking to about 200 people out there who can say, I will put my trust in God. And that's my first point I want to make to you. How I trust God determines my level of peace. I'm going to say that one more time. How I trust God determines my level of peace. Because if I have my peace in God, I can all, no matter what is happening around me, I can say, God, if you got this, I ain't got to be scared of what they're trying to do to me. God, if you got this, I'm going to put my trust inside of you. Not yet, brother. God, if you got this, and the last thing the scripture tells me that when trust in God. He gives me a certain type of peace. Y'all say it with me. A peace that passes all understanding. And that what that simply means that whatever is clouding my mind, I know the Lord says, keep your eyes on me. Watch this. Can I go to the second one? It says the next point I want to give you is this. Uh, how I worship God determines my deliverance. I'm going to say that again. How I worship God determines, somebody say it with me, determines my deliverance. You say, preacher, what do you mean by that? You see, the problem is with a lot of us within the church, and I need to speak to us within the church, is that we think that God should be doing every single thing for us. And God only asks of us to worship him. And when we worship God in what spirit and in truth can, the Lord will show up for us. But the problem is that some of us think that coming to church is worship. Some of us think because we show up for the service, that's worship. Some of us think because we have a role in the church, that's worship. Some of us think because we, they call us a leader, that's worship. But that's why I have, now you see in the bracket right there, you've got to ask yourself, am I a thermometer or I am, am I a thermostat? What type of person are you? Because if you're a thermometer, you're only in the building to gauge the temperature. But if you're a thermostat person, you walk up into this building and you say to everybody, I am done with the dead people. I'm going on the side these people are ready to worship. You're not talking back to me. Where are my thermostat people up in here? You got to raise it up. I need about 600 of y'all out there to say, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. I need somebody to say, turn it up. I am so tired of dead people. I'm tired of those who don't want to worship God. I'm tired of people who's going around and ring around the rosy. I ain't got no time for ring around the rosy. I'm a, I need to be around people who say, this ain't working. Can we try this? Let's worship God. Let's turn it up in here. And that's why I said to Zephaniah when he came in. I said, Zephaniah, I want you to tear up my drums. Because today, I feel like worshiping God. When I worship God before I got here. And I will worship God when I leave here. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Is there anybody out there on this Sunday afternoon that says, how I worship God, I will be delivered. How I worship God, I'm going to get through. How I worship God, I will make it over this mountain. How I worship God, ain't nobody can stop me. Watch this. I got to get my last point and I'm done. Watch this. Hold this one. He says, when I look at verse 5, verse 5 messed my mind up, Taisha. Verse 5 says, but, it says, but, I trust in your unfailing love. Watch this. But when I read the song, I said, but well, nothing really changed. It never said that God answered. It never said that God showed up. And I realized something. 
that this psalmist was not going on feely feely faith. This psalmist, this psalmist was not worried about I don't feel like worshiping God today. This psalmist didn't say, you know what? If God don't show up for me, I ain't worshiping him. That's why my last point is how I expect to receive from God determines my expectations from him. I'm going to say that one more time. I got to get out of here. How I expect to receive from God determines my expectation from him. Where my, where my book Cephas Tucker at? Tucker will say, what you put in is what you get out. But when I walk up into the house of God, it ain't had nothing to do about how I feel. But when I look over my shoulders, I say, God, if you did it back then, you can do it again. God, if you delivered me one time, this problem that I presently have ain't nothing for you. God, if you made a way, if you did it one time, if you got me through the valley of the shadow, I gotta get out of here. I preach it like I feel it. If I you take me through the valley of the shadow of death, what is this mountain thing? If you took me through grad school, what is this new business for you? If you took me through high school, the dean said I wasn't gonna graduate, but I knew if I took classes in August. But I want somebody to know. I'm talking to some graduate right now. You may be looking around and they told you that you weren't going to graduate. But you had to take the classes during the summer. Well, I want you to say to them, Bump that. Tell me something good. I need to remember. Shaka Khan used to say, Tell me something good. Tell me that you like it. When you begin to worship God, I need you to somebody say, Lord, do you like my worship? Lord, do you love the way I worship you? Tell me something good. Tell me that you like it. When I came up in the house of God, ain't nothing, ain't nothing that I went through. But God, El Shaddai, my refuge, my strength, my deliverer, my high power, my rock, and a weary man, ain't nothing can hold me back. Ain't, I dare you, try it. Come on, enemy, I dare you. The God I serve, he's a God. Oh! 
Y'all don't get me started. Hallelujah. <laughs> of all the negativity out there, Ooh. My Lord. some graduates graduating, some are not graduating, 22,000 people getting laid off, some dealing with prognosis of cancer, some wondering why is the economy closing back? When is the government going to open up the churches? When is the, when is the government going to do this? Why? You need to look at God and say, God, tell me something good. Because the bad news can overwhelm you. You watching the news all day, that can overwhelm you. You looking back over your life and saying, I failed in, my, in, in so many ways that I can overwhelm you. <sighs> but I want to talk to those out there who knows that if it had not been for God, you wouldn't have been where you are right now. And so graduates, be strong. And those who didn't graduate, be strong. And those who just receive a prognosis, be strong. But, but, I will worship you, God, in spite of. The last line of that verse of that chapter says, For you have been gracious to me. And the King James Version says, But you have been bountiful to me. Bountiful in your mercy and your grace. I'm talking to somebody right now. You, 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 if you could press a reset button on 2020 right now, nobody will beat you to that button. And some of us need a reset button on 2020. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Some of us need a reset button. If God said to you, press reset on 2020, some of you and you get a date in December, you'll run right back to December 15th. I'll be like, let me just clear everything out, start over. But this is the day where God says, you can restart in a different way. Talk to me, tell me something good. Tell God, God, I need you. In my life. I keep looking at how I mess up. I keep looking at how I'm failing, but I need you. And then you turn to God and say, God, you like the way I'm saying it? I guarantee you God will say yes. God will say yes. If that's you, would you pray this quick prayer? Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. Touch my heart. Teach me how to love you and accept your love towards me. And to know that you're the God who makes a way. And you don't have to, I don't have to feel your presence to know that you're there. And when the negativity of friends and families come against me, I know you're there and I'll just pray for them. So save me this day. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you pray that prayer, you are saved. And I want you to just send us an email at bethotab 90 gmailcom And I'll personally reach out to you and pray with you. I'll pray with you. Thank you for joining us next week, Sunday. Um, it's our first Sunday in the month of July. Seems that we're not changing the times of service. We'll keep going. The service is an hour. But we'll pray with you also to know that our in the Amy Church, the New York Conference is coming up on July 9th. But next week, Sunday, is our communion Sunday. And I want you to start up this summer season having communion with us. Would you join us at 11 a.m.? This Tuesday also is our weekly Bible study with Victoria, First Lady Victoria and myself. Join us. We will bless you, I promise you. Thank you for being with us today. Remember, 1 o'clock today, we're giving thanks for our graduates and their accomplishments. God bless you. See you next time. As we sing, praise God from whom all blessings flow.
good. Tell me that you like it. That's what God is asking of you. You don't have to feel God to know he's present. Trust me. God didn't forget you. God will remember you. God will show up for you. God will be there for you. He is there for you. Now unto him was able to keep you from harm and to present you faultless before his throne. To the only wise God, be our glory, dominion, honor, and power. Now unto him forever and ever. And we sing it by certifying it and singing. We love you. We'll see you soon. God bless you. God bless you.